Hey, Ronnie, hop up there and I'll hand you a can of wheat. There's a millstone like this inside this casing. There are actually two stones. The bottom stone is stationary and it's embedded on the bottom, which doesn't move. And the top stone is the one that moves and does your grinding. This is how it happens. The adjustment for the stone is right here. By adding or subtracting shims, you can lower or raise the stones. If you're going to grind wheat, you really need to put those stones a lot closer together to get a good flour. This stick kind of jiggles, and it's jiggling and vibrating as it's dancing, as so to speak, on this top stone. That's turning. That's creating a vibration in this stick, and that's what allows your wheat to fall automatically. So you want to control the amount of wheat. You need this to balance stone. It balances the shoe so that you're not pouring all the wheat in at one time. You're creating a sort of an angle. You can adjust this angle, slope down a little bit more, and more wheat will fall in, in the hole. It's interesting, one of the uh, questions is, do I get any stone in my flour? And that's no, because the uh, stones never really touch. A screen in here is what separates your flour, so it's a very fine screen. It takes a little imagination right now, but when this thing really gets going, everything is fast. So fast, in fact, you have to keep the door closed because there'll be so much powder, flour dust in the air. Last year, about this time, we already had at least five pounds of flour. There was so much water. How much flour would you get in 24 hours? 24 hours, anywhere from uh, 40 to 50 pounds a day. We'd run it 24 hours a day. Very few wear and tear on these parts. Things that needed to re be replaced, of course, were the moving parts, like the belt, sifter, the sifter spool, maybe. Um, the leather pieces here. The stones themselves would last you generations. All you do is dress them, carve them out, nice and crisp channels, and away you go. If you look in the archives in Santa Fe, there was a lot of these mills dotted along the rivers, whether it be the Mora River or the you know, Rio Grande, whatever river there was, and to service not only the family, but the community or village surrounding that area. Uh, my grandfather, for instance, uh, ground uh, wheat flour for the uh, Piggly Wiggly that was in Taos. And that was quite a few years ago. That kind of ages the, the story a bit. Let's see what we got. The flour just falls right through and the chaff goes through to the other side. And you give that to the animals. That was one of the things that's really hard to control unless you have a cat. Yeah. And that's the mouse droppings. Mice love this stuff. So keeping it clean is, is the key. And that was one of the things the early mills had to deal with, is the mice. You don't want no surprises in your bread <laughs> or your cookies. Those are not chocolate chips. <laughs> and that's it. Keeping it clean, turn the water on and adjust your stones and you're ready to go.